understanding energy systems using candles. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video we're going to make sense of what is quite a complicated subject of energy systems but we're going to simplify it by using things you're already familiar with aka candles. Now I'm going to relate this to the level two and level three anatomy and physiology syllabus so that that's the kind of level that we're looking at. Level two is ideal if you're working towards your level two gym instructor or you're working towards any level two qualification that includes anatomy. Or if you're doing level three, that involves things like PT, Pilates, massage, aesthetics, all of those types of things work towards level three. So let's have a look at what energy systems actually are first, so that you understand the context of why we even need them. All three energy systems that we have, and I'll explain about each of those in a second, all three of them have the objective of creating a substance called ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate. You don't really need to worry or bog down too much on that detail right now. Just know that this is a substance that allows us to go and move and do things and expend that energy. So imagine that each energy system is actually creating money, it's creating currency but we're gonna call that ATP, okay? So this currency that we use, this money, is gonna be used every time that we contract a muscle, every time that we burn food, every time that we digest, all of those type of things, every time we walk, move, breathe, whatever, we're starting to expend that energy. But we have gotta create it first, and that's what we're doing in the energy systems. Now we have three of these energy systems because our wonderful bodies are prepared for all outcomes. That means we're prepared if we're gonna go and do something that needs a long period of time, but a lesser intensity. And also if we want a really hard, fast burning, but high intensity. So our body is very well prepared at adapting towards the needs of the environment and also what we're gonna go and put it through. So the stressor of that exercise or that thing that we're gonna be doing. So that's why we need three of them. We're gonna start with creatine phosphate. That's gonna be our smallest one and that's where we're gonna start. So this is like our tea light. Notice that it's a very tiny little burn time that we have on a tea light. It's something whereby you light it, it lowers down in a really quick phase. You expect it to be done after I don't know, an hour of burning or whatever. But our version, this lasts for like 10 seconds. That's how quickly our creatine phosphate, sometimes known as phosphocreatine, is, is used up and disappeared. The burn time is very, very short, but it does burn brightly and very intensely. So if you think about sports like a 100 meter sprint or a one rep max where you're lifting a load very heavy, these type of things, you need an explosion or a lot of energy straight away. It's like that first gear. You need it immediately to pull, off, pull away in that car. That's what's happening with this tea light. It's very, very bright. It's very, um, I suppose, fast burning and it disappears quickly. But then when it's gone, it's gone. You've got to wait, recover, and then resynthesize everything again before we can use that energy system maximally again. However, Another one that we have is our, anaero our anaerobic lactic acid system. Now, this has in common with our tea light version, our creatine phosphate, is that both of these are anaerobic. They don't use oxygen. But this one is our lactic acid system. Now, the lactic acid system can go for a little bit longer because 10 seconds wasn't very much to be able to go and do stuff. We've got to be able to still move a bit longer than that to make it effective. And this is where our lactic acid system sits in. And this will go for up to three minutes where you can stay anaerobic for up to three minutes, if you're pretty fit, it might be a bit less than that for some of us, but in doing so, there is a downside. And that's because it creates a waste product, which is a result of the lactate, or you might feel this or know this as lactic acid, but the lactate builds up in the blood and it becomes the something we cannot tolerate. And that lack of tolerance for the lactate basically builds up and you go, I have to stop exercising or I have to lower the intensity so that you can recover and go again. So this lasts for between 10 seconds and three minutes. Whereas this one is more about the 10 seconds and less. So that's our first two. They're both anaerobic. They do not require oxygen, which means that they are explosive, they're fast, and we can use them in pretty much any environment. And that's why we use our anaerobic, almost like that first and second gear in the car, 
So the first thing that you access is if you're moving quickly, if you need something for a short period of time, they are our low burn times. That's gonna be our little tea light and our medium candle. But the third one is going to be our aerobic energy system. And this is our long burner. It essentially, like it says on a candle, you've got a long burn time. So I could light this, I could probably leave it on all day and it could just gradually, gradually burn down. As a result, this is something that we depend on a lot in our energy systems. This is what we're going to be using day in, day out. I'm using my aerobic energy system predominantly right now talking to you. You're probably listening to this, walking, sitting, reading, whatever it is you're doing. That's when you're using your aerobic energy system. Also on things like longer distance activities, marathons, um, 10k runs, all of those type of things, you have to stay aerobic whereby you can keep the oxygen coming in. And as you keep the oxygen coming in, that's the moment whereby you're still using your aerobic energy system. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a bit that people get confused with energy systems. They think they only use one at a time, but that's not the case. We actually use all three all the time. They're always lit, they're always moving. And imagine that all three candles are always lit, but each one will have a different level of intensity of, I suppose, uh, contribution towards our energy systems and creating that lovely ATP but that different level will depend on what activity we're doing, how long it's gonna last, the intensity of that activity. So you need to be aware that the environment we put our body under, the stressor that we create in our body is gonna determine which energy system is used in order to create ATP. Now, here's the nugget. This is the information you need. This is the bit, the moment the mic drops, okay? <laughs> or the candle drops in my case. Um, but essentially, you need to know that if you put together an exercise program for your client whereby they want to progress their aerobic energy system, then you must be in a position whereby you are stimulating their aerobic system more and challenging how long that can go for. If they have a goal that relates more to the lactic acid system, maybe they want hypertrophy, maybe they want fat loss, that type of thing, then they're gonna be better off training in that zone. Or if they want something whereby it's about maximum strength, maximum power, maximum speed, then they're gonna be better off doing some training that fits in this energy system. So you have to take it logically. You have to understand the energy systems and what they actually do, and then go, okay, when my client has this specific goal, they'll be best off working and starting to expand their capacity within which of the energy systems. That's the one that you then focus on in your planning. So I really am a firm believer that when you understand something deeply, like understanding anatomy and physiology and understanding energy systems, that's when your planning gets better. That's when your progress towards your goal gets better and your clients achieve their goal. So you need to understand that this is not just learning it for an exam. It's not just going, oh, there you go. I understand that's a little one and a medium one and a big one, that there is a purpose to it that relates to the goal of your client and relates to how you plan those. So hopefully the candle analogy has met you and helped you kind of understand these in a lot better detail. So we've got our creatine phosphate, our lactate system, and also our aerobic energy system. These three are our primary way of creating ATP, but we will choose our dominance towards one of these, depending on the situation or the stressor that we're in in our body. So I hope that makes a lot of sense for you. Please do drop a little comment below about what your big takeaway has been from today. And if you haven't already liked and like the video and hit subscribe, please go and do that because that means you're going to get more videos like this. And it means we can reach more people like you, which will be wonderful. Let me know what your big takeaway has been in the comments below. And I'll also pop a link on here that will take you to the blog where you can find out lots of details about this same topic and also about our revision bootcamp to help you with your studies. I'll speak to you soon.